Get along up to the corral, Bill, down by the creek. All right. But how about letting me go into that dance tonight? But my brother, I can't give you any of the best of it. Miss Johnson niece just come here from Chicago. She is the cutest thing you ever seen. I ought to poke you in your nose for busting up our romance. Well, what's stopping you? Or you two listen. Those are for breakfast, Jimmy. Oh, gee. You got 12 of them, didn't you? Yes. Well, that's four for you, four for Pop, and four for me. I'm just eating one of mine now. Yes. And tomorrow you'll be trying to talk me out of two of mine. Maybe all four of them. Come along. Let's be getting home. Oh, you don't like donuts very much, do you? Get out! Drugs make me sick. Always yelling for some man to come and wait on me. I'm only trying to train you so that you'll be popular with the girls when you grow up. Ouch! Oh, who wants to be popular with drugs? I'm going to be a football fan. Ouch! Don't steal! Oh, Jimmy, if you just don't Still a minute, maybe we could get a bit. Oh, there you go. I suppose it's all my fault. You all right? I guess I'm all in one piece. Are you a cowboy? Yeah, sort of. That's what I'm going to be when I grow up. Do you live around here? Yeah. Do you? We're just moving into the old ranch house across the hill. It ain't as swell as I thought it was going to be. But Dad said that's the only place that he could get on credit. He ain't got no money. Jimmy! The gentleman isn't interested in our family affairs. As long as we are neighbors, I'd like to be neighborly. My name's Bob Blake. Please to meet you, Mr. Blake. My name's Jimmy Thompson. That's my uncle. Her name's Sally after my mother. Mother went with a funeral last year, and that's why I talked so broke. Jimmy, please. Oh, shut up, Sally. Didn't Mr. Blake get you out of the tent? And you don't even want me to say hello. Of course, Jimmy, I want you to say hello. But what? Isn't Mr. Blake a nice man? What is that? You talk? Why, sure. I thought you'd gone to town. Not yet. Fact is, I thought I'd take a little trip up to Cheyenne. I'll be gone two or three days. How'd you like to run a come on, Ruth? No, thank you. Are you sure you don't want to come along, Ruth? In this heat? Not me. I'll stay home. But have a good time. Good night, Mr. Blake. Come over again sometime. Thank you. I sure will. Good night. Poor Dad. He's not very well. You know, I think the work be on the rest. Well, I'd be mighty glad to help out in my spare time. So with some of the other boys in my outfit. That's mighty nice of you. But Dad thought of funny about letting folks help him. Yippee! Yippee! He never stops talking, even when he's asleep. There goes my boss, Mr. Steele. Guess I better mosey along now, because I gotta see him. 
Jimmy, Jimmy, wake up. Mr. Blake's leaving. You going? When you brand some more cows and horses, can I come over and help? Sure, you bet. Well, good night, Sally. Good night. Oh, wait. You forgot your gun. Well, I was aiming to leave it. Why? So that I have an excuse to come back tomorrow. Well, you don't need an excuse. Don't I? Well. So this is why you want to stay home. You dirty rat. You'll be all right, Mr. Steele. Here, let's get your collar open. Is that better? Boss, boss, who did it? The husband is dead. You ought to blame for this. Who did it? What happened, Bob? Someone shot the boy. Give me the sheriff's office. This is Mrs. John Steele. My husband has been shot. Yes, killed. Yes, I know who did it. All right. Please hurry. Sheriff of Steel. Sorry to disturb you, but you said you knew who was it. Bob Blake. 
It's a lie. Public. You sure it was Bob? Did you see him do it? Look at his gun, Sheriff. Shells fired. That's not my gun. Yeah, you're wearing it. What's it doing in your holster? I don't know, but I'm telling you, that's not my gun. Maybe not, but you wear it. I guess we'll have to kick you in, Bob. Now, Mrs. Steele, would you mind telling me just exactly what happened? This man has been annoying me for some time. Tonight, my husband caught him. Caught him? Yes, trying to force his way into my room. Don't let him get away! I've got him! I've got him! Let go! You've got me, you fool! He got away! Let's get him, boys! Well, you're going to tell me the truth, or I'm going to choke it out of you. All right, big boy. Stop choking. Here's the pay you've got coming. And I'd advise you to get across the border. Tonight. All right. You win now. But I'll be back. When I do... This sheriff will still be waiting for you. What are you doing here? I rode out there. Don't you see my horse? How to help your brother get away, huh? No, sir. I thought y'all wanted to race. I ought to run you in. Well, if y'all run me out there, you might as well run me in. Ah, come on.
you like my dance, Hansen? Not bad, beautiful. Sort of reminds me of a heifer full of local weed. A heifer? That's so more graceful. <laughs> There you are. Easy money, isn't it? Well, I don't 
Hey, Bert. How'd you like to make some real money? What do you call real money? $1,000. That all depends. What's the job? The thing. I want a certain woman, uh, well, uh, eliminated. Wait a minute, Butch. I'll make it $2,000. Cash? Cash. When the job is... <laughs> Who's the woman? I'll let Reverend. And your brother Carter, I believe. And who are you? Allow me to introduce myself. Yeah, mister, but that paper said that you is dead. As Mark Twain once said, the report of my death has been greatly exaggerated. But in this case, I find it very convenient. Yeah, I can see that all right. Well. How did you happen to come here? It is written in the good book, brother, that providence shall guide the footsteps of the weary children to a haven of peace and rest. <coughs> I see you have another guest, a noisy one. Yeah, but she won't make no noise after tomorrow. Oh, you're going to, uh... Yeah. Not until after I collect. See? Excellent idea. I see you're a very good businessman. Oh, I'm not so dumb. Two thousand ain't bad for one night's work, is it? Handy with that gun, ain't you? Who are you to miss? Brother, the next time I miss will be the first time. So you get $2,000 for the night's work, eh? 
In New York, they work much cheaper. You know, so much competition. Someone likely to hear her? No, there's nobody within 10 miles. That's why we hang out here. Then why not be for four while? You must know something. That's why somebody's paying you to get rid of her. All right, collect the $2,000. Tell them you did the job. Then collect again. Keep on. I've got to find some woman. Bob, you pay her too. They won't be watching you so close. Then you can get your chance. Look out. You city fellas get up mighty early and mighty quiet, don't you? Can you rule against that? Now, don't go snooping around here quiet like. It ain't healthy. I've never been sick a day in my life, Brother Carter. Now, now, now don't go get sore about it. You know how it is, a fellow. Well, you can't be too careful. I'm going to take a little ride right after breakfast. A little collecting to do. You want to go along? Well, uh, I... Sure, I'd like to see some of the country here round about. If you all don't get back time for lunch, you're going to miss the best mess of chitlins that you ever laid your lips on. Brother, did you say chitlins? I didn't say nothing else but. You may count on me. Hey, Deacon, for a tenderfoot, you handle the Bronx pretty good. Well, I used to be 11th Avenue Cowboy. 11th Avenue Cowboy? Sure, I used to ride down 11th Avenue in front of the train, waving a red lantern. Were you ever a real preacher? I preach the gospel, brother. Gun gospel. Where do we go from here? I reckon you'd better not go any further. You know me around here as a miner. Someone might recognize you. Town people would like to get kind of stirred up about that woman, you know, who can't uh... You're right, brother. I'll wait for you here. Well, oh, don't bother about waiting. I'll see you later at camp. Excitement. Excitement of plenty. Miss Steele's been murdered or kidnapped. I don't know which. Mrs. Steele? Murdered? Why, well, that's terrible, Chef. Is there anything I can do? I'm afraid not, Mr. Barker. I'd give a thousand dollars reward for the capture of them. You've got to make this community safe to live in. Okay, Mr. Barker. I'll do all I can. See you later. Any uh, cash, Barker?
Are you the new preacher? You aren't the same one we had at Pop's funeral. He was a little fat fella. You mean you've lost your father? Yeah. And now we've got to move because Sally won't marry Mr. Barker. He's the guy that's got all the mortgages on this land. And he says if Sally marries him, he'll send me to school. If Sally don't like him, then I don't want to go to school. I want a job taking care of my sister. I don't want a present. I don't even know you. Sure you do. You met me at the post office the other day. Oh, come on, kid. Let's get acquainted. And so we can't get the $2,000 by this afternoon, and Sally won't marry him, and we have to get out. This man had won the house. So sister's, uh, boyfriend? No. Her boyfriend. I know she was stuck on him. Every, she got mad every time I talked about him killing his boss. He said he didn't do it. I don't think he did it either. But if he did, he had a good reason for it. He was a swell fella. He was a cowboy. And that's what I'm going to be Wait when a minute. I... You get my horse to drink of water. Let me go, you boy. Oh. Let me go. Come on, kid. Don't be so stingy. Hey, you... hey what's your idea? What are you doing here? Oh, I just took a little ride, Butch. And while I was riding, I composed a beautiful burial sermon. Would you like to hear it? No. No. Oh, I was only kidding, Deacon. I ain't slow. I was, uh, she was... Oh, come on, let's get out of here. Not so fast, brother. Mmm. Smells good. Sister? Be a good Samaritan and feed two starving children. We are famished. Would you turn us from your door? If you're hungry, I'd, I'd be glad to feed you. Come on. Oh. Sit down, have a bite. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Come, oh, sister, sit down. No, I'd rather wait for dinner. Sit down. Excellent. See that? I don't see anything. Look again. Don't you see? No, what is it? Oh, your fortune. Come, I'll read it to you. Oh. I see a man who wishes to marry you. He has much land, many cattle, but you do not love him. I see another man. He is walking alone under a cloud. He's in great danger, but he loves you, and someday he'll come back, and I think you'll get your wish. I say you'll get your wish. Thank you, sir. It was a lovely fortune. But I don't think it'll come true. Oh, so you don't think I know what I'm talking about, eh? Very well. I shall eat.
Brother Carter, I think you need a little more coffee. Mm. Well, miss, how much do we owe you for his dinner? Well, Billy, I couldn't take pay. I... Very well. I'll set it right. Butch, pay the lady for our dinner. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. How much? Pay her $2,000. $2,000? Why, you... Take it. Oh, no. You don't want it? Well, I'll take it back. Come on, let's go. my answer, Sally. I can do a lot for you. And for the boy, too. If you only let me. Hear me! It's all right, Sally. You can send him to school where they'll make a little uh, gentleman out of him. No. I'm sorry, Mr. Buck. I can't marry you. Don't, don't be foolish, child. You don't want to move away from here, do you? But he loves you. And someday, he'll come back. No, and I won't move away from here either. Here's your money, Mr. Barker. Hooray, out of here, sir! Where'd you get this money? Never mind where we got it from. We didn't ask you where you got yours when you wanted to park. Give us our loan. You get back to the mine. I've got a little business to take care of. A loan. What about the interest? There isn't any interest. You loaned my father $1,500 and made him sign a note for $2,000. And we have papers to prove it. The note, please, Mr. Walker. I hope you aren't making a mistake, Sally. And here's the door, Mr. Walker, in case you forgot. And don't look back. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. You little devil, I'll wring your neck.
Well, sitting there quiet like, he comes in from behind and sticks a gun in my back and takes the dough. Well, what could I do? He had to drop on me. Well, I knew it was something good about this guy. Yeah, I knew it too. Well, what you going to do about it? Hey, you boys get your rifle. If he comes over the hill, ventilate him. But don't let him get close enough to use his gun. I'll stay here and plug him from the window if he comes up the canyon. Okay, boys. What's the matter, boys? You nervous? Uh, you're trying to shoot a rabbit. No, a rat. Well, what do you want with a rat? Shut up. Yes. Hey, sir, what happened to Lot's wife? Lot's wife? Oh, you mean the lady in the Bible? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, she done turned to salt. You see, she lived in a town of Soda. So she married a fella by the name of Lot. Now, why they called him Lot was because he had a lot of dough and a lot of sheep and everything. <laughs> so she started trifling around with a fella from Sonora. And that's where Salt Lake is now. But she started trifling around with him, and the neighbors started scandalizing him going on. You, you know how they do, see? So she's on her way home. And just as she started out, one of the neighbors said, honey, so your husband is looking for you, and she got scared because she knew she's trapped around on her husband, see? And she started running. And she started running down the street, and just as she got two blocks away from where she was, it started raining. And the rain started pouring down. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, man, it was cold. And she kept on running and looking back. So she got tired. See, she got to a place, and she sat down, called herself going to rest. And you know she couldn't move? She sat right there and couldn't move. She hadn't turned to no stones or nothing like that, and she didn't turn to salt. And the water kept on getting up on her, and, and it kept on melting her, and kept on melting her, and it melted. She got that little low until it washed her away. And when the water washed her away, that's how come the lake is salt. Brother, you'd better take another look at your body. Looking for someone? Who, me? No. No? Oh, what's the deal? No, sir. He just said he was aiming to shoot a rat. I thought you might be the least fit for about this. Hey, what's the idea? All right, fellas. I had to tell you all wrong. He's a great guy. Me and him's going to be partners, ain't we? Sure. When I get back east, I'm going to make you my Western representative. Come on, boys. We've got a little work to do. See you later, Deacon. Look at them high-tailed on the run. I wonder what they're up to. I don't know. Now's our chance. Come on. Bill, keep a lookout for me. Well, sister, how are you feeling? I'll pay you well to get me out of here. Will you pay as much as John Barker paid to put you in there? Why? Did he pay you to kidnap me? Not exactly. He paid to have you murdered. Two thousand dollars. I'll give you my rent. I'll give you anything you ask. If you'll just get me out of here, I'm rich. I can pay. Why are you so anxious to get out of there? To see John Barker hang. For what? Kidnapping? No. For murdering my husband. And Barker killed your husband, did he? Yes, yes. And now he's trying to kill me. What's up? Nah, that woman. We're making a hurry. We're going to have trouble.
For once, let me do the talking. Will you do me a favor? Sure. Get to town as fast as you can. Tell the sheriff and his deputies to come to the old mines in Perdita Canyon right away. What if they won't come? Tell them I've kidnapped your sister. That'll get them. Say, what's the big idea? Don't you trust me, Jimmy? You bet. Yeah. 
I want them. It ain't so bad when it's killed it yourself. <laughs> Sally! Get them up, you guys. Jimmy, are you all right? This is a pretty mess. Kidnapping and wholesale murder. You boys got anything to say for yourself? I can explain everything, Chef. In the first place, I don't think they're dead. That one's moving now. And in the second place, the girl wasn't kidnapped. She was too kidnapped. You told me yourself you were going to kidnap her. And he told me to tell you he was doing it. And that was to be sure you had gone. Because I said you wouldn't. But he said you had to, so I'd be sure to tell you. Since you so long getting here, everything was over. And that's why I don't never want to be a kid. But I sent that boy to fetch you if I'd have been really kidnapping his sister. But there's been kidnapping and murder, too. And if you'll come outside with me to the old mine, I'll show you who really is the guilty party. All right. But watch them, boys. Bring them along and watch them, too. Got the key, Sheriff. Mrs. Steele! Murderer! Sheriff, there's the man that killed my husband. I tried to save him by planting his gun on Bob's plate. He showed his gratitude. He saved that man to kidnap me, to murder me. Take him away, boy. Take Mr. Steele, too. You hold as a witness. I always thought there was something fishy about this whole business. That's why I never bothered about you parading around in that so-called disguise of yours. I mean you, Bob Blake. Bob! Thank you, Chair. See if you can keep him out of mischief, Sally. I'll be needing him when the trial comes up. By the way, you better be getting Jimmy off of that hook. Are you all right? How did you get down? All of a sudden. Jimmy, who do you think the deacon was? Why, he's Bob Blake. All the time you were Bob Blake, pretending to be a bad man. I might have known that. Well, I guess you might as well go on and marry Sally. There's a lot of work got to be done at the ranch. Jimmy. Oh, go on, kid. Get it over with. Can't just wait for you? Well, I'll be seeing you. Jimmy, the next time I go courting, I'm sure going to take you with me. <laughs> <laughs> 